Good afternoon, everybody, and um, welcome to this first edition of the Linapelle Innovation Talks uh, within the context of uh, a new point of view. What is uh, uh, a new point of view? A new point of view is, has been designed as a complement to the physical show, the physical trade show. Um, it's supposed to be uh, a digital fair accompanying, in this case, Lina Pelle London and New York, uh, which will be lasting from uh, yesterday, actually, July 14th, for four weeks uh, to August 7th, uh, always here on, uh, on Zoom. In this uh, first week, uh, I will have the pleasure uh, today to introduce myself. <laughs> I am uh, Federico Brugnoli. I work with Lina Pelle since many years. I am the curator of uh, the Lina Pelle Innovation Square, uh, which uh, I will present uh, to you uh, later on in my, in my other presentation. So um, just a few features uh, for all of you. To, to, to take part to this uh, online conversation. Um, you are free to ask any question by just uh, clicking the button uh, question here, there on Zoom. I will then recap and take uh, most of them at the end of my PowerPoint presentation. I, I hope uh, to be very interactive. Um, there is one other very important point that I would like to remind you. That is uh, a new point of view will also be physical. Uh, it is not going to be the usual in Appel, but uh, on the 22nd and 23rd of September, we are waiting for all of you to come to Milano uh, uh, in the usual uh, uh, venue in, uh, in Fiera Milano. So I will just now go uh, into the details of, uh, of my presentation. Um, which start again from uh, uh, who I am. And uh, I would also like to share with you what I have uh, um, uh, thought of being speaking to all of you. Um, we have been hearing a lot of different sources speaking about uh, sustainability, but uh, uh, I have serious doubts that uh, there are uh, uh, enough, there is enough clarity, especially in the fashion world, on what actually sustainability is. So, uh, one more time, uh, just a few features on, on myself as a person. Um, I have always been curious. I have been working uh, since my uh, degree in environmental sciences, 1997, on um, research innovation. Um, on uh, identification of new features, new uh, innovations in the fashion uh, area, in the fashion world, but not only. Um, I have been always an optimist, even in this uh, period of uh, COVID, of lockdown, this period in which uh, all of us have been um, put in uh, probably difficult situations here in Italy at the very early um, stages of the pandemic, it was a very bad situation, but now we always say that we are back to normal life with a mask on. So uh, this is another feature of myself. I, have, uh, I always look uh, to the future with uh, a little bit of optimism. I am fascinated by nature. Um, uh, I've been traveling all over the world. I, I'm a skier, I'm a, a tracker, a backpacker. I was a backpacker, actually. Um, I, uh, I don't know if any of you know who these hats belong to, but it's uh, uh, Jacques Cousteau, the very famous uh, documentarist and uh, oceanographer. So he was my idol when I was a kid. I, I didn't have any idol like, uh, I was not fan of uh, sports superstars. I was fan of uh, 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 a guy going around in the seas in the world with a, with a camera. Um, I believe in science and I believe in the connection of uh, different and new thoughts. Um, and uh, uh, I have been active in the world of fashion since the very, very early stages of my career back, unfortunately, back uh, uh, many years, 23 years ago. 
So as I was saying, uh, we are curating the Linapelle Innovation Square for Linapelle. Uh, we had two editions in Milano and four editions in total in New York and London. Um, among uh, these editions, we, will, we have been speaking about very interesting topics such as um, uh, biotechnologies, uh, the future of materials, um, digitalization, uh, biomimicry. Uh, in the first edition, we had more than 40,000, uh, sorry, 30,000 uh, plus uh, uh, social media contacts and 5 million plus media contacts. Numbers were even better in the 2019 edition where we have been speaking more uh, in specifically on uh, uh, upcycling, on uh, 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 new aesthetic features of uh, customization, again of biotechnologies, of nanotechnologies, and of wearable devices. Uh, we had 42 speakers from nine countries and three continents. So, uh, as I was saying, uh, uh, unfortunately, in this uh, September edition, Dili Nepal Innovation Square will not take place, uh, but we are looking forward for February to have the opportunity to come back uh, to, to all of you physically. So, uh, going back to the main, uh, um, to the main uh, topic of today, um, uh, I always say that <laughs> there were many things happening in the particular year. Uh, I don't know if any of you is a fan of The Simpsons uh, as I am, as I was, but the 1997 is the year where The Simpsons uh, have been broadcasted for the first time. It is uh, also the year in which, uh, in September 28, 1987, is this number of Newsweek, uh, in which uh, some persons that are now uh, covering different positions started being, uh, let's say, famous uh, as uh, billionaires and businessmen. But uh, it is also uh, the year in which a lady that you see here on this picture is Mrs. Gro Harlem Brundtland. Here she is speaking at the uh, United Nations in, uh, in New York. Why? Because she was coordinating the United Nations Commission that uh, uh, has commissioned one report that, uh, let's say, changed the, the way in which uh, people were looking at the development of humanity. We are speaking about uh, uh, the work carried out uh, and delivered on March 20th uh, in the World Commission on Environment and Development, where uh, the, the so-called Brundtland Report um, issued for the first time the concept of uh, sustainable development. So sustainable development is uh, uh, defined as the one that meets the needs uh, of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. There is also uh, another uh, very simple way of uh, representing uh, what sustainable development is and is uh, the conjunction of, uh, let's say, three spheres of interest, the environmental, development uh, or the protection of, for the environment, the uh, social development and the economic development. So uh, when we speak about uh, uh, sustainability, we speak about this particular area uh, at the very conjunction and uh, um, overlapping of these three, uh, three rounds. Uh, uh, if the humans would uh, uh, only take into consideration the economic growth or the economic development, probably um, uh, ambition could, uh, could fly over, could fly uh, to the moon. Um, but there needs to be also, uh, uh, as I was saying, uh, particular care to a social balance in the development of the different activities. And we know that uh, in the fashion supply chains, this has been very important in the past but also uh, particular attention also to uh, environmental protection. So when, uh, as I was saying, uh, we speak about sustainability when we are in the conjunction and in the overlapping of these three spheres of, uh, of interest. So, so we started from this concept in uh, 1987, 23 years back, uh, but what happened since then? 
So since then, uh, there has been a, a birth of uh, the concept of environmental sciences, which uh, uh, were not present uh, before. Um, the first year in which uh, uh, there was a graduated in environmental sciences in Italy was 1996. Um, uh, a little bit later than uh, other countries in Europe um, and earlier than other countries uh, all over the world. Um, there has been also an explosion of uh, green labels and certifications. The source of this uh, uh, graph is uh, ecolabelindex.com that I suggest you to have a look at. They are basically uh, the largest global directory of ecolabels. Um, last year, they were tracking 463 ecolabels. So I always said that this is very bad, not because uh, it is not showing an interest in the development of uh, good environmental claims, but because uh, the proliferation of uh, such an amount of different uh, standards, labels, and certifications is uh, in the long term going to uh, risk to confuse the market instead of uh, providing uh, um, a good reference point. Um, this is something that I uh, uh, always represent, is kind of funny, but uh, it's a uh, research done by the World Watch Institute in their 2013 report uh, the, um, uh, on the state of the world. Basically, they have analyzed the frequency of use of the word sustainable in the English text uh, as a percentage of all words by year um, and using Google as a source. So you see here, we are now in 2020 and uh, they made a, um, a projection that uh, if the amount or if the rate and the pace keeps on being like that, by the year 2100, more or less, all the sentences will be made by the word sustainable, repeated over and over and over. So just to say that there is also a risk of, uh, uh, let's say, downgrading the importance of, uh, of the word. Uh, it is overused. Uh, of, uh, most of the time it is used without a real meaning and it is used uh, not in a proper way. Um, when I, I, I started to prepare this presentation, I, I wanted to made up my, make up my mind and I, I, I was uh, trying to think of uh, what I do think sustainability is, irrespective of uh, standards or, or science or academia. And I think uh, sustainability is the most important topic to be addressed by humans if we take it in a broader spectrum, therefore including also social aspects of, uh, of life. Sustainability uh, refers to a complex problem. Um, there is not a unique uh, definition of sustainability. We will see later on that also on the environmental case, uh, sustainability can be defined by many different uh, uh, aspects. And therefore it is described by many different parameters, um, indicators, numbers, uh, and here again, uh, there are many, many different standards that will be telling you how to describe uh, uh, or how to uh, evaluate uh, sustainability. Sustainability is based on science. Uh, it is uh, uh, very important to uh, state this. It is a scientific topic. It is not a communication topic. It is not a marketing topic. It is based on scientific evaluation. Those who have not a background in science cannot properly work on sustainability simply because they don't have the basis to do that. I don't think a sustainability can be rated. So grades or A, B, C, gold, silver, bronze, or whatsoever. Um, uh, because, uh, uh, as I was saying before, it is uh, too uh, complex to evaluate with a sim single rating. 
There have been, for example, the, the, there is the last example of the joint research initiative of the European Commission, which has started to, to work on a single score in sustainability, but uh, they, they have not been succeeding in it. Uh, they have taken a, a, up a methodology, but uh, uh, on which uh, nobody has a real trust. Sustainability does not have anything to do with communication. Um, marketing or uh, greening the image of a company does not make the, make the company more sustainable. It uh, does only uh, um, need the use of more green ink. Um, uh, sustainability is not understood by the majority of consumers. Uh, and this is to be, has to be very clear to me. Uh, I think that sustainability can be implemented in particular in the fashion industry through uh, a proper uh, collaborative approach in supply chains uh, at the level of uh, business to business. Because uh, the level of uh, uh, acknowledgement of the majority of consumers, I'm not speaking about the smallest part of uh, highly educated consumers, probably East Coast, West Coast, uh, United States, uh, some part of uh, urban uh, areas uh, in Europe. I'm speaking about globally, uh, um, a global approach. So globally, I think uh, consumers really don't have the possibilities and nor, nor the capabilities to understand to, uh, to a certain extent what sustainability is. Um, but of course, uh, uh, everything that I've said uh, allow us uh, to measure uh, so at least some key parameters that can be referring to a sustainable approach to production. So uh, what about uh, fashion in particular? Um, as I was saying, uh, uh, there have been a lot of uh, different uh, uh, experts working in the past uh, on uh, uh, possible definitions of sustainability. So I am not uh, here presenting to you anything that is meant to reinvent the wheel. Um, we can have, uh, uh, the first thing is that sustainability has to do with uh, human rights. And I am here referring to the vast majority of standards ISO standards or uh, UN uh, uh, global compacts or United Nations approaches, European policies. And uh, here is just a, a synthesis, uh, a very brief synthesis of the different uh, topics that have to be considered. So the first one is human rights. Within the global and overall uh, uh, title of human rights, uh, we can uh, uh, think of uh, Topics like uh, uh, avoidance of discrimination, gender discrimination, cultural discrimination, uh, racial discrimination, in whichever context uh, that is linked, uh, uh, in particular here, of course, we're speaking about the, the fashion industry. Uh, there is uh, uh, the guarantee of the basic rights, uh, avoidance of child labor, for example, and the, basically the adoption and respect of all the measures that are guaranteeing that humans are working in, uh, in full respect of, uh, of their rights. So this is topic number one, unavoidable. Topic number two is what we call labor practices. And within uh, this title, uh, we are looking at uh, uh, people that uh, have proper working conditions in terms of uh, occupational health and safety, for example, in terms of uh, working hours. Uh, and again, here referring to fashion uh, outside of uh, Europe, outside of the US and of, of South America, but there were conditions in certain countries in Asia, especially in the clothing industry, in which uh, uh, this topic of uh, working hours was uh, uh, really taken into serious consideration because uh, there were low, uh, low wages and uh, long working hours, uh, extra time for a, a lot of people. Uh, under this title, we speak about the right of workers to aggregate in, uh, in uh, to be represented by unions and to have a dialogue 
with their employers. Again, here, two basic things, uh, human rights and labor practices, uh, unavoidable also in this case. Uh, well, then, uh, of course, uh, if we speak about sustainability, we have to take the environment into consideration. Um, there are some, let's say, old uh, ways of speaking about environmental protection. I will present to you some uh, more modern approaches. Um, we are speaking about uh, uh, reducing the production of pollutants. Uh, reducing the impact uh, on the environment, uh, reducing the impact on the on the land, avoid deforestations, um, uh, but also uh, uh, depending upon, again, one more time, the evolution of the scientific knowledge, there are some problems which are tackled by one by one. So I don't think any of you were hearing anything about microplastics five years ago. Why everybody is speaking about microplastics now? Because science has evolved and because they have found that the world is face, facing a new threat uh, with microplastics. And so this topic is coming into, uh, into the discussion as uh, the ozone layer depletion was uh, 10 years ago, as global warming has been for many years because of scientific results. Um, the fourth topic related to sustainability is fair competition. Um, the need also in the fashion industry um, to uh, be operating in a, a working environment that is respecting the intellectual property rights, for example, that is um, uh, taking into consideration measures to avoid any kind of uh, uh, private to private or pub private to public uh, uh, corruption, so anti-corruption measures, um, that is uh, avoiding uh, um, uh, the production of fake materials, for example. Uh, just take uh, also into consideration that I am not, as I was saying before, I am not rating any of these. I think that all of them are, are as important uh, as, uh, um, as the other. And of course, uh, uh, especially for us, consumer safety is another topic that is very much linked with uh, sustainability. Why? Because uh, we cannot be sustainable if we produce goods or materials that are harmful for those uh, who will be using it. Um, this is also a long story in, uh, in our world uh, because uh, it's since long time that we have been uh, uh, testing all the different materials and products uh, that we put on the market, uh, looking for many different harmful chemicals, um, in particular when uh, these products are destined to the consumption of uh, kids and children. But uh, there is uh, still a lot to do. Um, avoiding the production and the use of uh, hazardous chemicals uh, in, uh, in, uh, in general. So, as I was saying before, sustainability can be measured. Um, and uh, I am in particular a fan of one methodology that is called life cycle assessment. And um, I will speak about it also taking this into a, a different angle. So basically, life cycle assessment is a discipline that allows us to uh, evaluate and quantify the environmental impacts that uh, uh, are generated along the whole life uh, of a product. So here we have the example of a piece of clothing coming from uh, uh, natural fibers. Uh, so that uh, the, its life starts to when we are harvesting the crop. In the case of leather, the life starts uh, when the, the hide of the animals are taken out after slaughtering. And uh, the end of life uh, is uh, when uh, um, the product uh, is not used anymore by its uh, uh, first consumer, I would say. And then there are different options. The product can be repaired. It can be landfilled, it can be upcycled, or it can be resold, or even recycled. 
So all the environmental impacts that are generated into uh, these uh, uh, different phases of the life of a product can be measured. And we are currently working on, uh, uh, on uh, these kind of projects with many different customers uh, around the world. Some examples of measures. Uh, well, I think uh, all of you have uh, heard about uh, global warming, but this is not the only one. Uh, that can be taken into consideration. So um, we, we, we can evaluate how much a product is contributing, for example, to the acidification. Um, I think uh, you all remember uh, back in time when uh, there was this uh, big debate on acid rains or uh, eutrophication, that is the growth of uh, algae and the loss of oxygen by uh, natural water basins. Uh, due to the presence of uh, organic uh, uh, pollutants. Or, for example, the ozone layer depletion, which was also another very famous environmental impact, I would say. Uh, but also biotic depletion. By abiotic depletion, we mean the uh, use of non renewable resources of non biological origin. So, these are just examples. There are many others potential impacts. Uh, uh, both on the environment, ecotoxicity, for example, water toxicity, human toxicity, and so on and so forth. Um, is one of these more important than the others? No, I don't think so. Again, uh, it, has, it is just a matter of uh, being aware that there needs to be an equilibrium uh, in the minimization of the environmental impact in general. So why is this important for different categories of uh, uh, of, uh, of you as the audience of uh, uh, Lina Pelle, Lina Pelle New York, and Lina Pelle Londra. Um, in particular, for designers, um, it is now possible also through these measurements to design a sustainable product, to think about a product to be sustainable from the very early stages of its life. I always see um, uh, the possibility of products to be conceived with uh, a sustainable uh, DNA, products that are designed to be sustainable. Um, I always say, think is more powerful than doing. If a product is designed, for example, to be uh, upcycled or to be part of a circular model, then it will be part of a circular model. Um, if a product is designed to be product to be produced uh, or realized uh, in uh, local uh, uh, supply chains uh, in an economy of proximity um, uh, wherever in the world uh, then it's going to be more sustainable most probably than others uh, but these are things that designers should put in their work before giving the result of the work uh, to the production guys then uh, there is also another category. I mean, uh, the, I, uh, I am focusing on designers and retailers in this case because for industrial producers, uh, it is obvious. Uh, it, it is more obvious than for these, uh, uh, these other categories of, uh, of stakeholders. Um, uh, what needs to be done? Uh, a factory has to be clean, a factory has to be non-polluting. Uh, in a factory, uh, workers need to be working in proper condition and, uh, and uh, health and safe, uh, healthy and safe uh, conditions. But uh, designers and retailers probably have not approached themselves uh, enough uh, at the moment uh, to the topic of sustainability. So for retailers, I always give an example. We are for the first time in history, uh, in which a pair of shoes costs like uh, a Big Mac menu. So here we have 8.41 euros on Amazon, uh, independently of the taste or of the visual appearance, I would say, of these shoes, which I would never wear, not even uh, being threatened by death. Uh, so 8.41. And 8.40. This is a signal of something that has happened. So we are so much focused, or our industry is so much focused on cost reduction and mass production that the focus on, on, the, on the useful life of the product is not there anymore. Um, I was in a big uh, 
let's say, furniture factory, famous, Italian, famous all over the world. They are specialized in, uh, in leather sofas or armchairs. Uh, and uh, in their museum, there are pieces who are, which are uh, 80, 85, 90 years old, and they are beautiful. I have a pair of uh, beautiful leather shoes that I will never throw away. I will wear them until I die because the, the, the older they get, the more beautiful they get. Instead, this is the situation in which we are. We have uh, uh, um, uh, buildings and buildings and buildings full of textile and leather waste coming from uh, products that are used by consumers probably for six months, a year, and then uh, they are simply either forgotten in a, in, an, uh, um, in a cupboard before being thrown away or they are thrown away. So I think that the paradigm should shift from uh, mass production to quality and care. And this is something on which uh, I think there is a, a lot of thoughts to be, to be invested. Uh, then, well, this is a kind of sad picture for most of us. Um, the representation of, uh, I don't know if it is exact or not, of uh, um, this new host that we have, uh, the COVID-19 uh, virus, which is uh, uh, by, for sure a new trigger that is going to change uh, uh, and has changed already uh, many different habits and many different industrial sectors. So if there is a new trigger, uh, there, is, there are new needs. And uh, we are starting to think of, uh, of uh, possible more declinations of the word sustainability under these new conditions. If we have new needs, uh, uh, we have new keywords. So we have asked our, ourselves, uh, but uh, uh, what are essential keywords also in this uh, COVID-19 situation? Um, surely, we are looking, uh, all of us are looking at uh, new life and new social models. Um, on one side, it's very bad because uh, I have been personally in, in, a, in an apartment in Milano for 63 days in a row with the only noise that I was hearing uh, were the ambulances running all over the city for quite a long time. But now we are also, since I'm <laughs> a, 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 an optimist by nature, um, uh, we are looking also at new models also of uh, experiencing life. Um, I am uh, uh, broadcasting from home today. Uh, I have spent, I was at lunch with my son. Um, he's going to come here at home uh, with a friend of his uh, in a while. So I spend much more time with him. Um, and this is probably even more sustainable than uh, my lifestyle before, in which in 2019 uh, I have been traveling for 220 days out of uh, 365. The second key word is uh, what we call supply chain solidarity. Um, our supply chains in the fashion industry more, most of the times are made by uh, big giants, being them retailers or brand corporations or luxury groups um, that are working with uh, a vast number of small and medium enterprises. So what we mean by supply chain solidarity it means that uh, also these big players could play a role of uh, um, uh, uh, supporting their, uh, their suppliers, even uh, in uh, paying conditions, for example, um, uh, especially in a moment in which uh, the work is, is, low, is uh, slowing down, there is the workload are low, uh, and so on and so forth. So there is also a new model of approaching the supply chain or approaches uh, uh, in, uh, in, in our lives. New technologies are coming in, both uh, uh, digital technologies and also uh, production technologies, we have been um, uh, very much stimulated on the topic of collaborative robotics uh, and, uh, for example, and uh, or customization and automation of production. 
uh, new ways of looking at health and safety. <laughs> we all have to be at uh, what we call, they, they call it social distance, I call it uh, physical distance, because I think that socially we're closer now than what, what we were before, but we are, even if we are physically distant, but this is a new model also to look at health and safety in the, in the workplace. So um, just to maybe conclude and, and uh, go to the session of Q&As, which I really hope uh, will, be, uh, will be numerous, um, I just uh, uh, would like to also uh, emphasize the fact that uh, uh, sustainability in the, this period has to also move uh, through new organizational models, which are linked to new business models. Uh, but also new product features. So also in the Q&A, if there is any hint uh, to reply to the question, uh, there is no sustainability, if there is no in, uh, in, uh, in this period, uh, it would be very welcome. So I hope you all enjoyed my presentation. I will just uh, stop uh, sharing my screen now and uh, uh, we can open um, the session of uh, question and answers. So I read here that there is uh, uh, one question already on uh, the future of uh, sustainable footwear materials and components um, and uh, that uh, consumers want more sustainable material in their shoes. True, uh, it is uh, really a matter of understanding what uh, we mean by sustainable materials. Uh, uh, is leather a sustainable materials? My, my, my answer is yes. Um, but uh, it is uh, also a matter of really understanding what uh, consumers mean by uh, sustainable materials and what uh, um, uh, brands mean by sustainable materials. So, but the, the request for sustainability is surely increasing in, um, in, uh, in time and in complexity. So, yeah, I have answered this question. So, um, well, if, have you heard of more facilities to process post consumers waste regarding footwear? Yes, oh, um, this topic of uh, uh, post-consumer waste is very interesting. And uh, we, uh, we have uh, to look uh, uh, to this problem in um, in uh, in two different mean in two different ways. The first one is uh, if we speak about post-consumer uh, waste, we mean uh, a used shoe. So a used shoe uh, can have a different fates and destination, um, but most of the time uh, the currently available technologies are looking at uh, uh, recycling the materials that are making our, uh, uh, the shoe itself. And to recycle the, to recycle the materials, this shoe has to be disassembled. To disassemble the shoe, we need either a lot of time or uh, a specific machinery that is currently not available. Moreover, the shoe is the classical example of multi-materials that are either stick together uh, or put together or sewed together making it very difficult to uh, separate the different materials and therefore uh, create uh, uh, more recycling possibilities. Uh, if I think you remember when I was speaking about uh, design, con the, the design for sustainability, well, there is also a discipline that is uh, now increasing in importance, it's called design for disassembly, meaning uh, um, uh, these products are conceived and designed from the beginning to be easy to be disassembled and therefore easy to be uh, recycled. I hope uh, uh, I have answered uh, your, your, um, uh, your question. So uh, then uh, another interesting one, not an easy one, uh, if there is a dissonance between uh, uh, social sustainability, environmental sustainability and ethical sustainability, well, there might be, but the, the, in, the the cases are very limited. I mean, I, I have not seen 
cases in which uh, an ethical approach uh, was not environmentally sustainable, for example, or an environmentally sustainable approach was not uh, ethically viable. Um, probably it is also a matter of uh, understanding how these ethical or uh, social concepts are, um, are uh, to, be, uh, to be evaluated. Uh, there, is, there are cases in which there are many different options for production to be taken into consideration. One may opt for, uh, I don't know, sustaining the economy of uh, emerging countries uh, in which there are probably more um, risks from the environmental point of view and others can uh, instead opt for uh, uh, keeping production in countries where uh, environmental protection is much more um, uh, taken seriously in consideration. And uh, uh, the problem here is always relying with costs. Then I have a pleasure to read a question from Sabrina Frontini, ECEC, the Certification Institute of the Leather Industry that is uh, telling me that um, uh, sustainability is not simple to be measured, um, uh, but brands do have uh, uh, their final rating to qualify the supply chain. Um, and uh, Sabrina, I, I think you also already know what I will reply to you. Uh, that is to say, this is true. This is creating also some difficulties uh, in, uh, in, in suppliers because the, the rating systems of brands uh, are also different. They are all very similar, but they are different one from the other. Uh, so uh, there have been attempts in the past to create aggregations of at least a certain number of, uh, of them, all going in the same direction. I think that the keyword uh, in, uh, in, um, in, the, in the near future is harmonization. So my opinion is that uh, there will need to be, um, let's say, a supply chain overall agreement on uh, how to measure, how to rate, and how to evaluate. Uh, as I was saying, uh, everybody and all the companies are free to make their own choices based on, uh, on their own evaluation criteria, but uh, um, then this could create uh, even uh, uh, more confusion uh, in, in, the, in the near future, not making it effective for um, the producers of materials and components, for example, to be actually able to invest in a specific direction. So uh, everything that goes in the right direction is appreciated, but uh, in, in general, we could do better. So I don't see any other uh, question open. Um, it is now then uh, the time uh, for me to thank all of you to taking part uh, to this uh, first uh, Linapella Innovation Talk. Wow, okay. What do you make a dissonance between obvious increased consumerism on one hand and sustainability on the other? Even in times of Corona, whenever you turn people want back to their old life, including their old social standing, so no one seems to pay for the extra cost of the sustainable production brings. Yes, this is true. I am, uh, I am uh, convinced that uh, it is not always the case that uh, uh, sustainable production is more costly. Uh, it could be in some cases, but not always. Instead, when we look at the practices that we have identified, for example, through the life cycle assessment I was uh, uh, referring to before, uh, we see that uh, being more uh, environmentally sustainable, for example, means also to be um, uh, efficient in terms of uh, production costs. Um, where so this is this is the the, the first part of of my of my of my answer um, and then who has to absorb the cost or uh, if this is uh, the case uh, having said that this is not always the case well it has to be distributed uh, among uh, the different actors 
in the supply chain, I think. So uh, I think I've answered also this, uh, this question, I hope. And uh, um, yeah, for 45, if I don't receive any other question within the next uh, uh, few seconds, I will, I will close the session. Uh, again, thanking all of you to be um, uh, so patient to have listened to me for 45 minutes in a row. Um, and uh, uh, um, looking forward to seeing all of you to the next appointment also of the Linapel Innovation uh, Talks uh, within uh, this initiative um, uh, that is uh, uh, a new point of view. So uh, next week uh, we will have also uh, a new conversation also within the Linapel Innovation Talks. So thank you very much uh, to all of you. I am now closing uh, the, the session. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.